Well, I'm going to get started. I don't know if I can ever see your comments, and I'm sorry if I can't get to them, but I want to keep with the timing that I said. So my name is John Sangle. I own Lake Erie Chestnuts, which I started in the spring of 2015. We're finishing our fourth growing season. A total of 320 plus trees covering about eight acres. Uh, a little bit about myself. I am not a trained wildlife person or plant grower. Uh, I'm an emergency physician by trade. Uh, and this is just something of interest to me. I grew up on a farm, but it was more typical corn, soybean, wheat. And uh, ever since, you know, I kind of grew up and moved away from the farm, I kind of wanted to d dabble a little bit in that as well. So I ended up choosing chestnuts. Hey, John T, thank you for the good morning. If you guys can hear me okay, click a thumbs up or put a one a wow face or something. That'll let me know you can hear me good. Uh, but I, I'm, like I said, I'm a physician. I wanted to do some farming and I looked into chestnuts. And a couple reasons I chose chestnuts is I... Uh, I hunt deer uh, and deer love chestnuts. So I kind of fell into the, the advertising from Dunstreys are and how often, you know, the deer just eat them and will climb over oak trees to eat them. So I kind of fell into that and I thought that was pretty good advertising. Then I started looking at them as a crop, a uh, way to make a little bit of money and make the farm at least pay for itself. And it, it fulfills a lot of things I need. Uh, it's not my primary job, so I can't spend all my time doing these. Uh, and chestnuts don't require a lot of maintenance. You plant them, you kind of protect them from critters, and then uh, they don't require spraying multiple times like apples do. They don't require top work uh, to, you know, trim them back every year, uh, you know, every spring or anything like that. Uh, they just kind of grow. And then their season of harvest is less than a month even less if you can do grafted trees. Uh, so they only have a few pests. Uh, but the ones they do have are pretty major. So anyway, I chose chestnuts for that reason. Easy to take care of, easy to grow. Uh, they're a tree crop. I'm not having to put a lot of work in them through the summer other than some light uh, floor maintenance. And uh, anyway, so uh, that's how I chose chestnuts. So I started in 2015 with uh, I planted three true Dunstons that I bought from Real Tree Nursery, and then I bought a hundred chestnut seedlings from uh, Empire Chestnuts of Carrollton, Ohio, from Mr. Greg Miller. He was a very great resource. Uh, he sold me a bunch of those seedlings. He gave me ten different varieties. Of course, they're just seedlings. They're not true uh, varieties. They're just a they. We know the mother tree, and that's all we know. They're open pollinated, so we just know. The tendencies that they could have, but these trees could are all new varieties, uh, and so they're kind of unpredictable. Uh, so, like I said, I put about I put a hundred of those in, and I grew a bunch of seeds. Which, if you watched my videos before, uh, how I started the seeds, I ended up a bunch of Dunstan seedling type varieties that I grew from Chestnut Ridge of Pike County, uh, which I think they're great, and they'll have seeds available in the next couple weeks out of Illinois. So. A lot of people contact me uh, through that Chestnut Ridge. They put my name on there as someone that can answer questions. I am not an expert. I, As I'm showing today, I'm going to try to open my first burr today and see if I even have my first product. So I'm definitely a rookie, but I have learned a lot over the first four years. And so I field a lot of questions uh, by phone, email. I'm happy to entertain those, but I thought maybe this would be a good uh, forum to do this. So... Uh, you can see the trees behind me. Uh, this one's leaning from quite a few uh, burrs on it that are look like they have nuts in it this year. You can look down the path here and you can see the trees are all 12 to 14 foot tall. And these are now four year old trees. And uh, the, a lot of questions I get is how much protection do I need to give the trees? Well, I'll uh, turn the camera around just a little bit and uh, see if you want to tell me if they need any protection. This is the time of year that the deer uh, start hanging around and wanting to push over trees and rub their antlers. And so if I was a conspiracy theorist, I would think that the next door neighbor is messing with me, but I know better. You see this tube with this poor tree bent over in it? I didn't do that and the neighbor didn't do that. 
that's a deer rubbing his antlers and jacking up the tube. The good news is the tree looks healthy and it's gonna be just a matter of standing it back up and popping it all back down on the tree again. So easy to do. But this is what'll be frustrating uh, as you grow along. Cause looky here, what a deer do, they have rub lines. They rub their antlers on rows of trees as they walk down. And you can see right next to it, they have another one. The good news is these trees survived. Some of my trees don't survive. They rub them so much that they snap in half, uh, which is a frustrating thing. So are tubes enough to protect? Not completely, but the deer do get bored and move off and eat the corn next door or start eating the grass or the clover that's down the row. And so that, I, I, the tubes are enough and they're cheap enough that I use them. And the tubes I use are from Tree Pro out of West Lafayette, Indiana. These are Plantra here, but as I've expressed before, while Plantra has some pluses, they have a great stake. Uh, they're all the same size, and I think they're a good tube overall, but they are very expensive, and they really increased their price from the first year I bought them. So I went to Tree Pro, and Tree Pro does a great job for me. Uh, sometimes I've done wire cages. I have a few trees that are not part of the orchard that are over by food plots. Those trees have been snapped in half regularly for three years until I got smart enough to put a tube and a cage around them. So uh, while you're watching along here, if you wanna comment where you're watching from, that'd be helpful so I can see where you're from. I got, we're, almost, we're gonna check a couple trees out here to see if they actually have nuts in them. I hand pollinated a couple, but I, to be honest with you, I didn't take record of where I did that and where I didn't. We, we don't have enough pollen really flying for all of them to get pollinated, I don't think yet, but next year we definitely should. These trees here are 30 foot, 30 foot apart and the rows are 30 foot apart. And then over here, I moved to 15 foot apart. You get increased production early, but you'll have to cut out trees as they get bigger. So, equipment. You may have saw, seen the tractor I have initially. You don't need a tractor. I started out with a lawnmower mowing along this and it does make it pretty. Uh, but you know, I use the bigger tractor now, it's easier and I can move things better and I'm preparing for maybe someday I'll have some production. All right, I see Americus, Georgia there, John, and then Wayne County, Ohio, Kevin. Okay, so you're pretty similar to me in Ohio. In the south, you guys could get away with some grafted varieties. These are all seedlings. And so if you do grafted varieties, you can get your harvest cut down to like a week and a half. Everything the same. Uh, and I know in Michigan, Michigan Growers uh, Cooperative do do grafted varieties. Uh, but Mr. Miller from Empire Chestnuts told me that there's a high risk of sudden graft failure three or four years where inexplicably you have death of the graft which I'm not willing to take. I may do some grafting later just to play around. Uh, but and what else do you need for equipment? Well, I used to think that I needed to dig in uh, my, my chestnuts with an auger and I was gonna put an all, it turns out they're easier to plant just using a shovel. Uh, I can plant just as fast as using an auger and plant well. Uh, what else was I gonna say? For planting, do I recommend seedlings versus grafted varieties? Well, if you're in the south or out in California where there's no blight, in, the, in California there's no blight, in the south you have warmer temperatures, uh, not as cold winters, I think you can get away with some grafted varieties. Uh, you can get some bigger nuts. There's debates on whether the colossal has a, uh, but uh, you know, I've got a whole of different varieties here. I've got Luval's Monster, I got PQM, I got Ching, uh, I have Payne, I have what was thought to be a Kinsel, but probably is a Ching. I've got about 15 different varieties out here in the orchard. Uh, so you just need a shovel, you need some plants and you can buy those, uh, or you can go after uh, growing seeds like I have uh, the weeds there. Yeah, yeah, definitely have blight down south in Georgia. I, I was trying to correct that by saying in California there's no blight and it's warmer and then Georgia it's warmer so you can do grafted varieties but you'd be 
have to be careful about trying to do things like Colossal, which are have, a, I believe, a European uh, background, which Castanea sativa, I believe, sativa, however you want to pronounce that. So I do all seedlings. Uh, if you have any questions, getting uh, sound popping up there. Well, the progress I see so far is my trees lean a little bit as they've come out of the tubes. They send up one single shoot and then the next year, which is this year, we've gotten to uh, get more branches. And then as we get these more branches, we're going to get much more pollen flying, a lot more burrs. I expect uh, produce to go way up. Hey, Zach, good to, good to see you on here. I know I've talked to you several times. Hopefully your trees are doing well. So this is a Chinese chestnut, pure Chinese, out of uh, the Pennsylvania nursery I purchased. And these burrs uh, look like they have a nut in them. They're supposed to be, they're advertised as a much smaller nut. I'm going to lay down this phone for just a second because that thing is, I'm unprepared for pulling it off. And I'm pulling it off early because I'm just too hyper. I've waited for about two weeks and I just can't stand it. So the nuts may be... Uh, white colored instead of fully brown, but they're starting to get a little brown on the edge I'm gonna lay the phone down for a second and get this seed off one second Dadgum it I'm an unprepared person I thought they'd pop off a little easier All right. So if you see there, I've got the burrs down. Man. They are like needles. I'm gonna gently pick that thing up. And you can see that's two, I don't know if that's two burrs or one, I think it's two different burrs off of the same branch. So you can see it's starting to get a little brown on the edges, some of those. And last year when I waited, they turned from this to completely brown in like two days. So I decided I would pick them. So let's see what we got. Let's pop it open. Maybe we can get it popped open, maybe not. Over here. I'm too too excited to even wait. It has rained like crazy recently. Well, maybe I should have brought something to cut them open. They're not wanting to pop open. This is a great broadcast. <laughs> All right. What do we have inside? Well, it's too early. It is a white nut. Uh, but it does look like it was fertilized. There was a unfertilized nut in the middle. And so my eagerness has, has jumped in front of this. Now from what I hear, so there's the white nut. So that was a fertilized nut. I just need to be a little more patient. Hopefully you guys can see that. Let me know if you can see it. I'll lay it on my pants leg. So this is a much smaller nut than I used to planting, which I get from uh, Chestnut Ridge of Pike County. And then there was a middle uh, non-fertilized uh, nut. And then another fertilized one on the other side. So it was gonna have two nuts inside and then this one here. Uh, so I'll have to check these pretty closely once it comes ready. So we'll walk over to the bigger uh, chestnut tree. I'll leave these. I just get, carry them along with me. And uh, I have another tree that had tons of little bitty burrs. I they think they're probably all unfertilized. They have a little more color here. Another from the same variety, but I'm just going to be patient, I think, since that went so poorly. But people tell me that you can take those burrs, the nuts, and they'll gradually turn some color. 
Now here, looky here. Think the neighbor's up to no good? I don't think so. It's the deer not being good neighbors. So they've popped another tube off. This time they ripped a few leaves off. This is a tree I had to replant from one that died. Uh, I planted it this spring. They always look this weak green, at least they do here the first year. They're struggling to grow up and uh, they just have a kind of sickly look the first year here for whatever reason. I've gently fertilized them. It doesn't make a big difference. But anyway, that's what I found. If any questions, again, feel free to post these. On here, I'll be able to see those. If you guys are using tractors or if you're using lawnmowers, I don't know. I mean, none of this uh, has a any big... Yeah, it depends on how much work you want to do. And I think, Zach, you had talked about possibly doing a, a U-pick. And I've kind of given a lot of that thought and thinking that might be uh, a pretty good uh, method uh, for me to try too. So I'm, I'm giving that a lot of thought versus selling direct to customers. Now, I am selling tree seedlings. Uh, I sold a few this year and next year I'll ramp that up. They'll be Chinese American, just hybrids. All right, let's see. I got some. I got the congratulations there. Okay, thank you, Chili's Chestnuts. Yeah, I know you do a lot of posting on another page there that cast all, all about Castanea species, all about chestnuts. That's great. Uh, my alleyways are not a particular cover crop. Uh, it is. It does have a lot of clover, but it's got a lot of this Queen Anne's lace. I find that the soil is not super rich here, so if I just mow it low, I get a lot of clover naturally. My soil pH runs about 5.7, sometimes as low as 5.5. Five. I've been told that if you have good red oak, uh, you must have, a, uh, you will have great property uh, for chestnuts, and I have good red oak crappie. Any irrigation? <laughs> no, God irrigates this thing. I got five inches in one day a few weeks ago. We have a lot of rain here. Uh, people don't know, but Cory, Pennsylvania, where this is located, gets more snow than any other city in Erie. Erie just, uh, or in, in the state of Pennsylvania, Erie, uh, Pennsylvania just gets a little more pressed because it's bigger and you have to be over 100,000 for uh, the city to get recognized on the Golden Snow Globe, or what are they, Snow Globe Award. Five Dunstans, all five years old, only two burrs. I'm trying to look for the rest of the comment. I can't see the rest. Uh, I can't see the rest of that comment. All right. Click a th thumbs up if you can still hear me. It's saying low network connection. <clears throat> All right. So, I, I guess I'm going to take a vote. There's a whole bunch of you still on here. Okay, only a few. Uh, take a vote. Should I pop open? This burr, this burr is much bigger, much bigger. Uh, and should I pop it open or should I just uh, leave it alone and let it open on its own? Uh, I'll go based on your voting. While you guys are voting, yes or no, do you want me to open that burr? I bought a John Deere 5065E. It's a 65 or seven horse tractor. Uh, it's probably too big to be mowing the rows, but I have no problems uh, really mowing them now. I just do one pass down when I used to have to do multiple. I'm looking more to the future uh, where I can put forks on the front and be able to move the uh, tractor. You know what? I'm going with you guys. All right. There's five of you on. Three people voted. All of them said no. So I'm going to listen. Three. You got four of you now. Yeah. All right. I've had you on here for 19 minutes now. Uh, I'll, I'll open up to any other questions you may have right now. And uh, yeah, yeah, Zach, I'll give you another update uh, when I pop on there. Chili's chestnuts. I like that. I've seen that. I just haven't seen it on my own property. The bird just fell down. Of course, it was unfertilized last year. 
yeah, I love the tractor. The tractor has been great uh, it compared to, I went from a push lawnmower, my first set of track, uh, first set of trees to a riding lawnmower, to an old Ferguson 1951 tractor to this one. So I've definitely upgraded in the four years. Uh, maybe I'll own a combine or something in a year or two if I keep going at this progress. Uh, but in a couple years, I'm going to uh, be maintaining the entire orchard as opposed to just the uh, rows. But right now, I'll just keep some habitat for the turkey and deer and go from there. All right, I got one or two more minutes. Any questions anybody has, post them. For those of you that are going to watch this later, not watching it live, I can still see the comments. Uh, make your comments. I'm hoping to turn this into a productive orchard here. And it looks like, you know, we've had some blight, uh, but the blight has not been a huge problem. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, sharing the progress as I go along. And I hope you guys comment and follow me at Lake Erie Chestnuts or follow me at my name on YouTube, John Sangel, J-O-H-N-S-A-N-G-L. I appreciate it and thanks for following with me. No questions? Have a great day, guys. Get out and enjoy the outside. Post some pictures of those trees.